Hello friend, <laughs> welcome back. My name is Becky if you're new and we've got a project we are gonna tackle today. We have been out of water. We have a winter storm that I think is going around a lot of the country and we've been out of water for four days. Normally we spend a ton of time in the kitchen, but with no running water, we can cook, but I don't wanna make a huge mess of dishes because I have no way of washing them easily. So instead of focusing on inside projects, I thought what we would do is let's give this seed growing room a little bit of a facelift. So I went and got some paint and I thought, what time is better than now than to tackle a little bit of a painting project? This room, I really had no plans on painting and giving a facelift, but you all had recommended before I start any seeds, we should go ahead and get it painted. So that is what the goal for today is going to be. I not only need to get the walls painted, I need to get the ceiling painted as well. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in here in the next coming months. And once I have a bunch of stuff growing on these grow light racks, there is gonna be no painting done. So nothing like the present. So I've already removed the freeze dryer. I had it running actually. So I moved that out into the garage and I have it running still. And what we need to do first is remove as many of these outlet covers. There's tons of screws in the walls. We need to remove these hanging things. There's nails. And the awesome thing is a lot of this stuff has just been here from the previous owner. I'm gonna take it all down and then I can figure out like the hanging rack there where I would like a hook or a nail or whatever it might be that functions better for me. I just left everything where it is because I just came in here and started seeds. So let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is just remove all the outlet covers so that I can paint around them and it'll just look nicer once it's painted. Okay, that one doesn't work with this one. One thing I did do is I went ahead and put a space heater in here because I was thinking if it's really cold in here, the paint not might not dry properly. So I have it set to 68 degrees. So that should be plenty warm enough once we get going on painting. And then I have a Ziploc bag here and I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the screws and plates into this so that hopefully I don't lose any of them. And some of these are pretty dirty. They've probably never been wiped down or washed. And so this will be a great time that I will wipe and wash everything before I put it back onto the wall. These are just random screws in the wall. I better pick that tack up before I step on that. This winter storm has been going on for a week and a half. It started out as snow, and that's when we had those really cold freezing temperatures and snow, that's when our water went out. And snow, it was still drivable, but we were supposed to be getting an ice storm coming in. And so I knew that I wanted to go get some paint because the ice storm was coming and I would be stuck because ice is a whole different ball game than snow. And so that's what I was able to do. Now, my plan is to get the walls, the ceiling, the trim and the doors painted and prep is the most important part. And it is the part that takes the longest and so we're going to get through all the prep and then we can start putting paint on the walls and see this area start to transform now that all the outlets are out i'm going to go ahead and remove all the grow lights and i'm just going to stick these into the garage for now just so that i'm not if i put them in the middle of the room then i'm gonna have to work around them the whole time i'll just disattach them Instead of having to move all of these at one time, I think what I'm gonna do is stick these on one of these shelves. That way I can just pull the shelves 
along with all of these out at one time. Try to work smarter, not harder. In my mind, I was gonna get this project started and finished in one day, and you are gonna see just how long it ends up taking to get this project done. I underestimated the amount of time for prep work and painting ceilings. I forgot how much work it is to paint ceilings. So you're gonna see just how many days this project spans, but I was really excited to have the opportunity to do this. Not that I'm excited we didn't have water, but if it wasn't for that, then I probably would have never started this project, and it's gonna really, really brighten up this space quite a bit. Whenever it comes to painting projects, I always forget how long the prep work takes and the dry time, because sometimes you have to wait for paint to dry. I thought these shelves were mounted on the wall, and it was only one screw, let's see if I can, holding these shelves up. So instead of taking the time to paint between these, I figured I might as well just unscrew it, get these away from the wall, then I can put them back wherever I want to. I'm gonna get these up against each other. So now we've got a lot more wall space that we can easily paint. I did just deep clean this room, but obviously uh, there was a big shelf here. I didn't deep clean behind it. So I still have the shop vac out and there are cobwebs and all sorts of yuck where those shelves were. So I need to take a minute and clean all that out. Would help if it was plugged in. My original plan for this week was to start a bunch of seeds. I was gonna start my onions and some cold weather crops, some perennial flowers, but there was a couple reasons why I couldn't do that. One, all my seeds have been delayed. I ordered all of them over a week and a half ago and because of all the cold weather around the country, they have been delayed showing up at my doorstep. And my soil that I ordered, I ordered my Vermont compost, that has not arrived. And so even if I had water, I wouldn't have been able to start seeds. So there was actually kind of a couple reasons why this project was able to happen. If I had started seeds this week, I never would have started this project because once you have you know plants and grow lights and all the things, moving these shelves would have never happened. And what we're gonna be able to do is really now customize this space. This was the previous owner's workshop and that's how it was set up. And so now when I start bringing things back in, once the project is done, we can really customize where we put things. The room is basically prepped. Now this is not making it absolutely perfect. Obviously the walls are not textured and this is very, very rough. Long term, we have no idea what this space is going to be. Long term, seed starting will happen in a greenhouse, but I don't know when we're gonna be building a greenhouse. So for now, my goal is to just use some paint to make this room look a little bit more presentable. And so that when I have starts growing along these walls, they are gonna stand out and look beautiful because we're not gonna be distracted by the yellow walls with the muddy mud. So this is not a professional job. This is just making it look a little bit more pretty and a little bit more enjoyable to be in here. So I have now prepped all of the walls, meaning I just cleaned them really well. And now what I'm gonna do is actually prime everything. I have one gallon of primer, and I don't know if I'm gonna need more than that because we have to prime the ceilings and the walls. So I am just going to get to it. I just had the thought I should probably patch the holes in the walls before I prime it. And my wall patching putty is rock solid. So this is garbage. So I'm gonna go run to the store and grab some putty so that I can putty the holes on the walls and then prime the ceiling and the putty can dry while I'm painting the ceiling that I can sand the holes. Like I said, this is not going to be a perfect paint job, but I also don't want big holes in the wall if I can get the paint job to look a little bit smoother on the walls. So let me show you the holes I'm talking about. So on this wall, this is next to the door. I'm not sure what these were in here for, but there were a ton of mollies that I just took out of the wall and they left a pretty big hole. And then there are screw holes and nail holes all over. 
So I know it's not gonna be perfect because obviously there's no texture on the walls and the paint or the mud and the tape will show through, but at least I could patch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 holes just in this one section. So it'll look a little bit smoother and there are holes everywhere along these walls. So I'll be right back. I mean, there's tons of them because there was a shelf here that I took down. So I'll be right back and then we will get this painted. I just got back and I decided to grab two paintbrushes as well because we are gonna have primer, ceiling paint, and then the wall color. And because I have no water, I don't have a way to rinse out my paintbrush between uses. So I thought these were just really, I think they were like $3 or $4. So I will wrap them up and I'm not gonna use them as disposable brushes. When I have water again, I will wash them out and reuse them. But I thought that it would be best to have that. And then I got my spackle. So I'm gonna go through and just start filling holes in the walls. And it says that it dries in 30 minutes. It's pretty cold in here. It is, I turned the space heater off when I left. So it says it's only 45 or 49 degrees in here right now. So I have that turned back on. So it might take 45 minutes to dry, but that, it'll take me 45 minutes to put primer on the ceiling for sure. I also decided I'm gonna paint this trim. So I need to caulk the, oh yeah, that's already looking better. I need to caulk around the trim. The trim is in pretty rough shape and we could, it probably could be due to replace it. But I think if I can just give it a little bit of a facelift, we can get a little bit more life out of it. The ceiling paint and trim paint is paint that we have from when we painted inside our house. So I didn't have to buy any paint for that. And the caulking too. I just found caulk in my tub. So I didn't have to buy anything for that as well. So I'm gonna knock the trim paint out as well and it'll look a lot better. And then I'll need to sand this after it dries. That's one wall. I think I've gotten all the holes. <laughs> I could have missed a hole or two, but we're gonna start with that. And I think what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and get some of this on and around the two windows and the two door frames so that when I paint it, it'll give a nice cleaner finish. I never used this one before. Here we go. So if you've never used a cult gun, there is tube cut tip remover. Yep, right there. Right there got a little knife on it. You wanna put your tube of caulk in there at an angle. Let's see if I can do this. Cut it. I didn't do a super clean cut. My hands are cold. We're at 50 degrees in here now, so I probably will have it warm enough in here in just a minute. Okay, so now we've got our caulk done ready and we're gonna cloak around the doors and windows. I've got a paper towel. This was in our garage, so hopefully it's not too cold. There we go. Oh, it's coming out, perfect. Okay, so this is something I have a lot of experience in, but I've never done it when the cloak has been super cold. So this cloak is not coming out very properly because I think it's so cold. And I don't have water to wash my hands. So I think I'm gonna get the cloak around this entire door frame. And then I will smooth it out with my finger. I think because I don't have running water, I'm gonna wrap my finger in a paper towel. And I'm gonna use that to clean my cloak line. I 
That didn't work very well, so I'm just going to use my finger. I was able to get all the caulking done, and now I have to wash my hands. This is just a pot of snow water, so not drinking water, just water that I can at least get my hands clean. So I wanted to get all the caulking done at one time so that I wouldn't have to wash my hands a bunch of times. So I actually just have a scrubber, and I'm just gonna use as little as water as possible, and I'm gonna get my hands clean, and then we're gonna start painting. I want to get all the caulking done at one time so that, because it's always so messy. And normally I use a ton of water when I do this, but I usually use, have a, some wet paper towels and some wet sponges and things, but this worked just fine. I can tell you living without water for many days in a row makes you appreciate running water that much more. It always amazes me how long it takes before the actual painting can get started. So I think we're ready for starting to paint the ceiling. I do have a drop cloth out here and it looks like I spilled a little bit of poking. And now we're gonna get a drop cloth down. And now it says it's 58 in here. So it's starting to warm up just a little bit which is great. The first thing I have here is primer and we need to prime the entire room, so ceiling and walls. So I think what I'll do is I'll just move my drop cloth as we get this primed. And I sure hope one gallon is enough. Now that I'm in here, I'm thinking, I don't know, it seems like it would be enough, but these walls are going to soak up paint. Like there is no tomorrow. And we are expected to have a second winter storm starting at four o'clock. So we've got some time. So if I don't have enough, I could go run back into town and get one more. This was just mixed yesterday, so I don't think I need to worry about mixing it again. I'm gonna go ahead and pour quite a bit in here because I think we're gonna use this whole gallon. And now I'm thinking maybe I should have painted around everything first with a paintbrush before priming, but this is the first time I've ever primed anything. Almost every time I tackle a painting project while I'm doing the prep, I think, what in the world did I get myself into? And I kind of regret my decision. But then once we get to the painting part, this is what we just worked really hard for. So I thought I had a longer handle, but I can't seem to find it. So I just have this short one, and between my step stool and this short handle, you can see it's only from here to here, we'll make it work. Thankfully, it's not a huge area that needs to be painted. Ah! My my trap is, I'll just set that there for now so it doesn't keep getting hit. I already think that's looking better. I'm gonna get my exercise in going up and down. And I think I'm gonna need more paint, but we'll see. An update on the Fugness Nat issue, because I was just stuck with one of those yellow sticky pads, is I have not seen any since I got rid of the contaminated soil. I think that was the most important thing was getting all that contaminated soil out of the room 
and the traps have trapped about a total of 10 or 15 and for the last week or two I haven't caught any that was the cool thing about those little traps is I could count how many were on there and I was keeping track and I haven't seen any in the last like two weeks so that's really encouraging and a few of you had said that you thought that I also had an aphid issue and I think you all were right I think I had two bugs that were in this room and it was 100% my fault for bringing in outside soil inside and so I just wanted to give you an update that we've I think eradicated the problem and I have plans moving forward to how to prevent that from happening again. I was just talking to my dad and I was inviting him over to paint because my mom's out of town and I thought he might want to come hang out but we both were like yeah that should work and then we remembered there is a winter storm coming up four o'clock. So if he got here, he might be stuck here. And being stuck in a house with no water is not so fun. So if the storm has passed by tomorrow and this project takes me two days, he's gonna come help me tomorrow. But I gotta figure out how to get this shelf down. It's gonna be a lot easier if I get this down to paint than to try to paint around. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh, keep putting my hand in paint. There we go. All right. Much. It's going to be much easier to paint around. And I'm going to move my coffee, which I have not finished my second cup yet. I don't want paint to get into it. I'm going to carefully get down from here. While I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and prime this. While I'm right here and the drop cloth is right here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint around the shelf, the shelf holder, I put my coffee there, so I don't have to move the drop cloth so many times. These brushes I got that were very affordable compared to the ones I had bought in the past, I really like actually. I think these were like four fifty, and they're doing a great job with a good, nice cutting edge. You'll notice I didn't tape anything because I do prefer to use a brush to cut things in. If you go slow, you can get a nice edge. I think actually a better edge than if you tape because I can see where I'm painting and it doesn't bleed through. I would say I've hit about the halfway mark and I've just used one entire gallon of primer. So now I have two more gallons of primer. I knew this was gonna take a lot of primer and it is indeed taking a lot of primer. I probably have about three fourths Of the ceiling maybe two-thirds of the ceiling done which is the least my least favorite part and I'm just gonna keep painting I think actually before because I'm at this wall right here which is where I patched a ton and I did pull out at one point here it is a sanding block I got everything sanded now back to painting so I just poured in my second gallon of paint in here 
here. And I have two more. So in case it takes three gallons. This is just primer. There's no, nothing mixed into it. So I guess if I don't open that third gallon, I could bring it back because it's not tinted or anything. And it's so much brighter in here. I've gone out of the room a few times to go into the house and it is significantly brightening up this space. The second primer, I did not get it at the same place and it's not quite as thick. My original plan was to paint the entire ceiling with primer and then come back and paint around the windows and doors and outlets and those things and then fill it in with the primer. But I was realizing I don't want to move my drop cloth a bazillion trillion times. So what I ended up doing was kind of painting it section by section in the room. So I would start and finish an entire section. So I would paint the ceiling and then paint around the windows and then fill it in with the roller or I would roll and then go in with a paintbrush. It was not 100% the same system every time, except the system basically was not to move the drop cloth a million times. And so here I'm now painting around the light. And I also wasn't wanting to have to move my step stool as much. So I would try to get all the areas that I could get with a brush where the step stool was. And then I would grab the roller and roll where I could, where the step stool was and so on and so forth. At first I was like, hmm, I'm not sure if this was a good idea. Once I got started, I think that happens most mostly when I do painting projects, but overall I'm so thrilled that I started this project. This area is done. Now I'm going to come focus on this area right here. See if we can get this done in the next two hours. It's definitely warm in here, so I think I'm just going to turn this off for a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is use the bucket and a paintbrush and I'm going to paint around everything first with the paintbrush and then I'll come back through with the roller because uh -oh. the part that takes the longest is cutting in. What has kept me company throughout this project is some audiobooks. And if you're interested in knowing what I was listening to on this day, I can link the books down below. I finished a book that I had started when I was out of town, and then I started a second one. I used to listen to audiobooks every single day, and then I kind of have been lately more into podcasts. And then when I went out of town for the weekend, I got back into audiobooks, and now I cannot get enough. And so... If you guys have any recommendations for any audiobooks, I would highly appreciate it. My favorite genre is memoirs and biographies. I absolutely love learning about other people's experiences and points of view. And so I just am fascinated by other people. And so if you guys have any recommendations on any memoirs or biographies or just any books in general, I am all ears. No pun intended. Did it. This took so much longer than anticipated because the walls just soaked up this primer like crazy. I went through two and about a half gallons of primer to get this done and it oh, feels good. So we have a lot more to do, but this is where I'm going to end it tonight because I want to take a shower. The Water people were here to assess the problem and they're gonna probably be back tomorrow to hopefully fix the problem. So before the winter storms comes in, I asked my sister if we could go over to her house and take a shower. And she said, absolutely, you are more than welcome. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my roller rolled up and my paintbrush rolled up because I cannot wash these rollers and brushes at this point because we do not have running water. I bought enough of these that I'm going to go ahead and just let this dry and we will toss that. And we're just going to let all of this dry until tomorrow. And I'm really glad 
I decided that I wanted to paint the trim and I'm gonna paint the door too because it looks super dingy now. I, I need to scrub it, which I'll do tomorrow. But the walls are not going to be white, they're gonna be gray, but still it's gonna give a nice clean look to this. So we still have to paint the trim, the ceiling and the walls. So we've got quite a bit more, more work ahead of us, but this already feels great. It's much brighter in here and I'll see you tomorrow. Friend, as soon as I was done in here yesterday, not even five minutes later, the freezing rain hit and it is 25 degrees out there. It's been freezing rain. It still is. So I don't think my dad's gonna be able to come out and help me today. It is supposed to get out up into the 40s, but it is only 25 degrees right now. So we'll see what happens. It's early, I have not even eaten breakfast yet because what I wanted to do was actually get out here and get the ceiling painted and maybe the trim too painted before, because I want that dry obviously before we start the walls. So I do have this big bucket of ceiling paint. This was left over from when we painted our main living. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure this is the ceiling paint. Yeah, Matt, um, I'm pretty sure I need to stir it. And I've got to figure out how to open this because it's been sitting. I did come in here first thing before I kind of got ready for the day and I turned the heater on in here and this paint has been in here. Let's see, I might have to get a, some sort of crowbar or something to get into this. Yes, we definitely need to mix that. Big clump of, oh, there's a roller that's stuck in there. That's funny. That must have been left from last time this was being used. This should be enough. This is probably about a gallon's worth of paint here. And I think I'm only gonna do one coat because we primed it, but we'll see when we get this on the ceiling. But I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one because it's partly dried and I don't want big clumps to come up if it's kind of partially dried. So I'm gonna grab a new one. Pour this into here. What I'm gonna do first, because once I start rolling, it's gonna go pretty quick, and what's gonna be the tedious part is cutting in the corners and around the lights and things. So I just grabbed a red Solo cup, and I'm gonna put some paint in here if I can get it without that roller that's still in. There we go. And I just have a really cheap, brush here and I'm just going to use this one. Yeah, it fits because I'm not cutting anything in so I don't need a nice fine taper or anything like that. And I'm going to use this because if I get some of this on the walls, that's fine because I'm going to be cutting the walls into the ceiling. And I grabbed my larger ladder instead of using that really small step stool and I'm going to do all the corners. I'm just gonna start right here. It's okay if I get stuff on the wall, so I'm gonna be cutting into the ceiling. And then I'll do around the lights. And then I can roll up to that point. And then I will toss this paintbrush. I bought this paintbrush just for using when I was staining. This was an extra one I didn't use when I was staining the garden beds. Because I don't have any water still in my house to wash the brushes out. Josh and I spent the first 
five years of our marriage remodeling the first home we purchased. And one thing that I did was I painted that entire house. I took two weeks off work and I painted the ceilings, the walls, the trim, and the doors. And we were never sure exactly when we knew we were gonna paint, what order should we do that in? And so we researched what do professionals do? And what they do is they paint the ceilings, then the trim, and then the walls. So that is what I have done ever since I learned that trick because when you're cutting in, you only wanna to have to do that one time. So if you overpaint on the ceilings onto the wall, then it's easy to cut the wall color up into the ceiling. And if you overpaint the trim paint onto the walls, which is white, it's easy to cut the color of the wall paint up against the trim. So that is the order that I am doing this. Ceilings, trim, and then the walls. And the doors you could kind of do whenever, but I paint the doors when I paint the trim because it's the same color. I've made it all the way around the room doing all the cut in. This is the last little section right here. That's great. You can see a little spot I missed over here. All right, all the cut in is done. I did notice there's an area on top of those cupboards that really needs to be vacuumed. When I was up on this taller ladder, I saw it and I didn't see it before. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get that vacuum so it feels clean and then I'll roll this entire ceiling and then we can focus on the trim because when I was up close and personal with it, I noticed that before we can paint the trim, it needs a good deep clean. So I think I'm just gonna set this here and I'll just keep that out. I did go ahead and put gloves on because it's hard to wash my hands without running water. So I figured gloves are something that are gonna help a little bit in this process. So now it is rolling time. I did take off the light cover. It's right here. I wanna do the same thing to this one and that one so that I can deep clean them. I'm obviously not gonna be able to deep clean them today because I don't have running water. And I think the very, very soonest we're gonna get that is tomorrow. So I'll just take that off in just a minute. But for now, I need to vacuum this up here. So I did not notice that that was a problem before, but now I know, so I'm gonna take care of it. I thought I had deep cleaned this area before, but there's always things that get missed. And this was one thing that I totally <laughs> did not know was a problem. And one of the benefits of doing this project is this whole area is gonna feel so clean and bright and light. And I'm just really looking forward to this growing season with having a refresh space to spend a lot of time in and enjoy watching things grow. And I said, we'd probably get water the next day. It's another like five or six days before we get water. Now that I vacuumed it, I've got a rag with water on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe all that down because not only was it dusty, I mean, there's dirt still. I couldn't vacuum up everything. And I want this whole area to feel clean when we're done with it. So getting this not only vacuumed, but scrubbed is gonna be important. I'm gonna go get some spray cleaner. I went ahead and grabbed a scrubby and cleaner because when we get to cleaning around the windows and doors, before we can paint those, I know I'm going to need it, so I figured I would just go ahead and grab that. So let's give this a good spray. I'm going to clean the outsides of them too while I'm at it. Probably should have done this before I got started, but I didn't really think about it as being too bad of a problem. And so once I saw it as a problem, I took care of it. I 
I'm definitely ready for breakfast at this point, but I wanna power through and get the, this is the easy part, get the coat of ceiling paint on the ceiling so that this can be drying while we then focus on other things and I can kind of check this one off the list. I may have to do one more coat, but I'm really hoping one coat of ceiling paint is gonna do the trick. And I decided I'm just gonna use the same roller I used for the primer. If I was doing this in my living room or kitchen, I probably most certainly would not use the same roller, but there's a little less, little lower stakes in here. And if I roll it on in this corner and I feel like it's not looking good, then I'll change the roller out. But I do want to get this down. And as I'm doing this, I'm really thinking I want to rip this carpet up and put something different down. But that is a project I will need Josh's help with for sure. Okay, here we go. And good news, it's starting to rain out there. It's not freezing rain right now, so that's good. I did spill a little bit or maybe a lot. And so I have the lid to the paint underneath this so it doesn't soak through. Okay, I do need the step stool. I painted plenty far enough away from the wall and lights. Oh, that looks great. I'm not going to be skimpy on the paint because I have enough. And I would love this to cover in one coat. We did it. I have painted my hair to prove that we got the ceiling painted. I think we're gonna get away with one coat. There were a couple areas where I went through and touched up and did a second coat. But oh my goodness, <laughs> ceilings are not my favorite thing to do. They are exhausting. This is not a huge room, but being at that really weird angle, it is tiring. So it's still drying. So what I wanna focus on next is the trim. So what we need to do now is actually clean these windows really, really well. While I'm cleaning, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the tracks because they're pretty icky and gross. And so we want a really clean slate before we start painting these windows. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take these blinds down. They are just attached. There's some screws in the trim piece and they're just hooked on there like that. So I might even ask Josh to reattach them so that they're on there a little bit nicer. I think I'm gonna have Josh, he is home today. I think I'm gonna have him take these off and it is officially above freezing. So we have rain out there currently, which is great. And I don't think, hopefully it's supposed to drop below freezing. So the road conditions can improve a little bit because today is not a day you would wanna be out there on the roads. We got one blind down and now I need to get this second blind down. And oh, you know what? I'm leaning all of that stuff up against those wooden shelves and those are right in front of the door that I need to focus on next. Oh yeah, yuck. This, this window needs some serious love and attention as well. Get this down. And we had the perfect amount of paint. I still have probably about a quarter of what was in that can for the ceilings. So that feels good. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. But this does not look good. Yuck, 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 yuck. So we're gonna get that clean. And then there were some areas that I missed caulking. So I'm gonna go ahead and caulk those too. I didn't, I missed them yesterday. 
looks like I didn't even notice these big holes in this because those blinds were too big for this window. So that's why they were hooked on those screws outside the window. And so the blinds were covering up those holes. And I want to get this trim all clean, scrubbed before I paint this as well. So this is how much of that ceiling paint I had left. So that was really nice. I didn't have to buy any ceiling paint for this project. I got a new thing of coal. And let's see. Go ahead and get these areas that I missed yesterday. I got the caulking done around the two windows. I almost forgot about this door. And so I had to move these shelves out of the way. I got the caulking done around here and it's amazing to me how much better it already looks just with all the seams filled and there not being dark gaps between the trim, the window, the window and the trim and all of that because there used to be, at least on here, you see where there's the white line going up there and the white line going up there. There were two dark lines going up. So now what I'm gonna do is I decided I'm gonna paint this black, just like I did when we did the, let's see, this door opens in, but it's very dirty, it needs to be cleaned. See how I painted this black? Well, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paint the inside black because it's never been painted. Let me close this. And luckily it's still not freezing rain. It's just rain, but it is very dirty and all of this needs to be scrubbed. So before I go through and I scrub all the doors and trim, I am gonna fill in the holes that I found over here. We're gonna get these holes filled in so these can kind of dry while I'm scrubbing and then We'll sand this at the end, right before we paint it. And Josh, when he came out here to take the screws off the trim, he said it's looking a lot better. So that was really nice. While I had my spackle out, there were definitely holes in the wall that I missed that show up really well once I painted. So I can go ahead and fill those holes right now so that when we paint the walls with the color, there won't be holes in the wall. Also filling the nail holes from where the trim was attached. I am about to scrub the window seals, but I want to do a quick before of what the windows and doors look like. And we're gonna get to scrubbing these. And then once scrubbed, we can paint. I have warm soapy water here, some cotton rags, a scrubber. And I'm obviously not painting this area, but while I'm cleaning the actual trim, might as well go ahead and clean this disgusting track as well. So we're just gonna get this I'm going to grab my shop vac out and get this clean. Okay, I should probably have one rag for the trim or the track and another rag for the actual windowsill. I'm gonna work my way from one window to the next window, cleaning the tracks and the window seals and all the trim. I wanna make sure that I have a nice clean surface. The prep work when it comes to painting is the most important thing. I wanna make sure that there's no actual pieces of dirt or dust or hair, whatever it might be. I wanna make sure it's all nice and clean. This is the most important part when it comes to painting because it 
whatever you're starting with, it's going to show through. And so prep is so important and it is probably my least favorite part. I thought we were done with this yesterday, but when I decided to tackle the trim, this all needed to be scrubbed and it all needed to be scrubbed whether I was going to paint it or not. This was a fantastic excuse to go ahead and get it painted. And once it's painted, it will be easier to clean in the future because it is a semi-gloss that I'm going to be using to paint the trim. And that is something that you can wipe off really easily. So this trim going into it looked pretty terrible. And Josh and I were talking, should we replace the trim? What should we do? But by the time I took the time to fill in the holes, sand the holes, caulk everything, it really looked pretty good. And then by the time we paint it, it looks pretty fantastic. So here's the trim paint. This is the same trim paint we painted in the house and it's just leftover paint we had. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up because it's been sitting in the garage for a good six months. Oh, probably longer, probably. Well, now I'm not sure, but it's been sitting in the garage probably closer to a year now. And I'm going to get the black paint mixed up as well. And we're going to paint this on the decorative piece around the window. And then I wanted to get this done first because I wanted to do two coats on this. And I knew this would dry relatively quickly. So I wanted to get this on here, get this base heater turned back on. And then we're going to paint the white trim. Now here I'm just using a watercolor paintbrush that has been adopted to my painting bucket where I use for things like this and I over painted with that black and I'm going to go through and I'll use a razor blade to scrape away the paint that was on the window and I've just found that's the easiest way to go but once we get this white paint on this trim I'm so surprised by how bright it is and how it just transforms this trim and makes it look brand new I'm glad we didn't decide to replace the trim because eventually at some point this whole area is going to be something once i have a greenhouse that might be in a year it might be two it might be three i don't know but we are going to buy ourselves some time and just really give this area a facelift without doing anything major other than getting it scrubbed really well and getting a fresh coat of paint and in the future it's going to be easier to wipe this down because it is now painted instead of it just being the raw trim now that trim is primed but it's kind of a matte finish and so anything that's matte finish is always harder to clean and that's another thing why I kind of wanted to get these walls painted because then you know if water from watering the seedlings that are in here gets on the wall at least there's a layer of paint protecting the drywall than just the water or dirt getting on the drywall itself so I worked my way around one window at a time one coat of paint and then I went to the other window and then now we're painting the trim around the door and it just really brightens this up. So now that I've got the trim done, I want to go ahead and get a second coat of black around this window. So this is what it's looking like with the trim painted and the, the window painted, but the door is not yet painted. And then here is what the before looks like on this door and I'm going to show you the after. We have some fantastic news. Josh has been working on doing a temporary fix on our water and I can take a shower tonight, which is something I'm gonna so thoroughly enjoy. So I think what I'm gonna do is kind of, and I can wash my paintbrushes out. I need to let all of this dry. One, I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna paint this door or not. I'm definitely painting this door because that will just look a lot better with it all white, but I need this black to dry totally so I can scrape around the windows and then I can paint up along the black. And both of these windows need one more coat of trim, but even with my heater on, it is very cold in here and it's gonna take a while for that to fully dry before I can do a second coat. So I'm going to pick up my mess a little bit I'm going to get the excess paint back in these containers. And then I'm going to go wash my brushes out, the one I used yesterday and the one I used today. I'm going to go ahead and get this on here. And I need to get my roller off my roller pad. I probably should put, I'm going to have to have Josh close this for me. He opened it for me. But I don't think I'm going to be able to close that without a mallet. This has kind of become my garbage. box 
But you can go through and throw a bunch of stuff away and clean up. This project definitely took on a little bit of a mind of its own. I just was not planning on painting the trim. I wasn't, I was just planning on painting the ceiling and the wall, but then I was going to make the trim look old and dingy, and then I wasn't going to do the doors, but now I'm doing the doors. And I'm glad that I'm doing it all because it's going to look so good, and we have decided we probably are going to replace these floors with, I don't know, maybe some, I don't know, vinyl or something, something that can get dirty and wet and easily cleaned. Carpet is obviously not the best thing in a utility slash kind of seed growing room. So I'm gonna get this room tidied up. I'm gonna go ahead inside, take a shower, and then I do have dinner in the crock pot. We still are in pantry challenge, and it has been quite the experience trying to clean things without running water. Makes me appreciate running water so much so. Water is heavy, and carrying water from point A to point B is not something that's super enjoyable. So I need to go grab a garbage bag. I just want to thank you, friend, for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we are beautifying this space. It's obviously got, you know, a little bit more work before we get there. I will go ahead and probably just by myself get the second coat of white on these, on the trim. And then we will be back when I decide if I'm going to paint these doors and when we paint the walls so you can see how it comes full circle and probably ripping out this flooring. So thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.